Hello, my cupcakes. I hope you are having an amazing day. My name is Misty Sims, and if you found me, then you found my little corner of the internet that I like to call Beyond Reasonable Doubt. Here's a safe space where we can talk true crime, the heinous, the unsolved, the unthinkable, all things true crime all the time. And I do hope you will take the time to smash that like button and that subscribe button, because if you do, that helps me out. It's a free way to do that and support this channel where I can bring you more true crime, all the time so and if you're a returning subscriber i am so thankful and i love you and appreciate you more than you know i'm so happy to have you around here to listening to what i have to say here on the internet and I do want to remind everybody before we get started today that this video is for entertainment purposes only. It is just information that I have found on the internet and compiled into one source. And I am just a lady on the internet with a camera, too many opinions, and a whole lot to say. So, <laughs> uh, but I do hope you'll hang out and talk to us because or talk with us today because this one. This one's a wild one. It, it was one that I've heard uh, other creators have done. Uh, it's it's something, and I'm eager to hear what you guys have to say about it. So I want you to leave some comments down in the comment section. But as always, please be kind, as we never know who might be reading them, family members, friends, other people affected by this or triggered by these types of cases. So let's just be super sweet little cupcakes, and let's get on with this case because it is a lot. Alexi Treviso is a 19-year-old girl from Artesia, New Mexico. Now, Artesia is a very small town of a population of about 12,000. And here, Alexi was leading a pretty normal life. She was a senior in high school at Artesia High School. She was in the choir. She was a cheerleader. She had a boyfriend whose name was Devin Fierro. And she was leading what sounds like the typical teenage life. She's going out with her friends. She's cheering at the games. She's doing all these fun things that we all probably did in high school all the time. Never thought twice about it. But on January 27th of 2023, that all changed. And what a ride it was from the evening of the 26th to the morning of the 27th when all this unfolded. So buckle up cupcakes, grab yourself a snack, a drink, something to snuggle with, because this one is wild. I've got, I've got my drink of choice right here. I'm, so, I'm from Tennessee, so it's sweet tea. And Lord knows I'm gonna need it, because this one, it, it's hard to digest. Um, it is triggering. So if you haven't heard of this case, this does involve um, children, so um, infants especially, so please, just know that if that affects you, you may want to click out of this video and I'll catch you some other time because it is, it, it is a lot to take in. So, um, but if you're here with me for the ride, let's talk about this. So Alexi's brought into the hospital the night of the 26th, early morning hours of January 27th by her mother and she's complaining of severe back pain. Well, anytime that they administer or any, or get ready to administer any type of medical procedures to a female who is complaining of severe back pains of any kind, it's standard procedure at most hospitals, in particular this one in New Mexico, to administer a pregnancy test. Multiple reasons. One, they need to rule that out because if there's any medications that they need to give you that could possibly harm your unborn child, they need to know about it, especially if you are unaware that you are pregnant and they can't do certain kinds of scans. There's just a lot of limitations when you're pregnant. So they want to give Alexi this, this test. Of course, she's saying there's no way, no way I could be pregnant. There's no need. There's no need, whatever. They're like, well, we got to do it. Got to do what we got to do. So they administer it. It's a urinalysis. They're also checking for UTIs. If you've ever had a UTI, uh, in particular as a female, you know that can cause a multitude of aches and pains. So they're hoping, you know, maybe it could be that and we can we can just attack that source right quick and get her on her way, road to recovery. So they administer the test and Alexi says at the, after the test is done that she urgently needs to use the bathroom. Um, so they're like, okay, bathrooms back down the hallway, you know, they are in the ER unit. So it's not like a private room where you have a bathroom right there with you. She is seen on hospital footage running down the hallway or as quickly as she can holding, you can see in the video, her backside, but a nurse would later give an interview saying that she was also holding in front. So back and front and the nurse kind of chalked it up to, well, if you need to go, you know, we got to go, you got to go. Um, <laughs> I mean, chuckle because I mean, you know, that's it's true, but it just seemed a little odd, I guess, especially after she had just done the urinalysis. Um, you know, you would think you might have emptied all contents of whatever you needed to empty while you were in there. Um, but she didn't and nobody thought a thing about it. Go ahead, go to the bathroom. 
She locks the door, as one does when they need privacy to use the restroom. And it takes a while uh, to the point where they're getting concerned. She was in there, I think, 19 minutes total, I believe is what I read. Uh, as always, research this for yourself because I will certainly mess something up. But I believe it was 19 minutes and they started to check on her, right? I think around the 10 minute mark is when they said they first went, hey, knock, 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 you okay in there? What's going on? She, I'm fine. I'm just having a hard time going, which didn't make a whole lot of sense if you're running with that type of urgency. You, you know, it's not like you're being pressured to go or have, you know, you, you seem to have this sensation, right? So didn't make sense, but okay. You know, she's a young girl. She's nervous. She's in the hospital. She's in pain, whatever. A few more minutes goes by. Da, 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 da. Are you okay in there? Yes, I'm great. At this point, they hear flushing and, and that in normal bathroom, you know, but it goes on and on and on and on. And then they can hear the paper towel dispensers like whirling, like, you know, the, the yank it down and rip it out, yank it down, rip it off, whatever. And they're like, are, are you sure you're okay? I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, okay. And then more flushing, more flushing. Over 10 times is what the nurses are claiming. So at this point, the, the head charge nurse uh, says, get the keys. Call facilities. Get the keys. We're going in because something is wrong here. This has been too long a time. She's a young patient. Let's get in there. Uh, they knew at this point that the pregnancy test had come out positive. So their fear was more so of her miscarrying um, and being alone. So they're like, got to get in. Well, what's, you know, she hears this out the door because, you know, as much as they can hear what's going on in there, she can hear what's going on outside too. She opens the door and walks right on out like it's nothing. And the nurse kind of looks behind her and there is a, just a, disaster of a scene in there of blood everywhere there's blood on the floor there's blood behind the toilet there's blood on the toilet smeared on the walls like and it's obvious that it's been smeared around on the floor like somebody's been trying to wipe it up and they do what I would do they're like what the heck happened in there are you okay like what were you attacked like I mean there's no one else in here what is going on and she's like oh I got my period I, I mean I don't know what kind of period animal takes over when she gets her period that you gotta like shimmy up a wall and smear stuff places and all that kind of stuff but I don't like like what uh, okay uh so and, and she just walks on by down the hallway heads on back to her room all right so keep that in mind just just bye let me get on back down here all right so it's a it's a crap show in there it's a poop show in there for lack of a better way to put it um so they call and they're like, hey, housekeeping, we're going to need you to clean this up. We got clean up on aisle seven and it's gnarly. We need you to get down here. And they're like, all right. So, you know, here comes, I think it's Layla. I think that was her name. You know, here comes poor Layla down there. Like, I, this was not what I signed up for today. They don't pay me enough for this mess. Like you expect in a hospital, it's funky junky, right? Like there's all kinds of stuff going on. But I mean, dang, you don't expect them to do it themselves while they're in the bathroom, but here we are. So she starts cleaning and she is doing her standard procedures of what she would do, which includes emptying the trash. Now, mind you, this is a little, um, it, it would appear out of the norm because it looked as though there was an, uh, an empty trash bag in the trash container, but it's, it's what they're supposed to do. So she picks up the trash bag or tries to and she's like I mean dang that's heavy like what what the heck so she yells outside for the nurse one of the nurses that you know are, are hanging out out there you know on at the desk and she's like can you come help me this is really heavy so they come and you know pick it up and they're like mm, something ain't right here and it looked empty and about that time the the head the head charge nurse realizes like Oh my God, there is a baby in the trash. What is happening? So they run into, I believe what he referred to as trauma room two. Um, I'm not obviously familiar with that hospital, but I'm guessing it's like across the hallway from the bathroom. They run into that room and, you know, I can only imagine <laughs> like what they're thinking. Blood's pumping. I mean, like I'm getting chill bumps just talking about this, like blood's pumping, heart's pumping, like, oh my God, there's an infant in here. 
And they're putting this all kind of together, I guess, in the sense of urgency of what's happening. And they're like, she she's had this kid in here. Like, oh, you know, oh, beep, beep, beep. You know, got to get this out. Got to get it out. So they go to get the trash bags out. Well, it is, it's tied off and tucked under. So you, I'm thinking like when I'm taking out the garbage for real, you know, and I've got something in there and you like spin the bag and then you, t- you know, you kind of knot it and tuck it under. I, that's what's in my head, right? So they pull the trash bag out, the empty one. There's trash on top of this tied up bag. So the head nurse, he cuts it, uh, or rips it. I think he said, he think he said he tore it, tears it and gets the baby out. Well, you know, it, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but it, it's too late at that point. Um, the poor little thing, um, you know, this it is, this is so sad. So it, if this is triggering for you now, it's time to stop the video. Um, he, when babies come out, as I'm, I'm sure some of you may know, hopefully all of you at least know this portion, even if you haven't had a child, they're, they're wet when they come out. There's, there's things, you know, there's things covering them. There's certain coatings that are on their body. Um, and you know, that they either clean off or now some people even opt to, to leave it on for a while, but that's still, it's wet, it's sticky. So when she placed this baby into the trash bag and then, you know, tried to, to wrap it, you know, tuck it under and all that, it just sucked on. Um, so you, you can imagine, you know, that it, if, if allegedly the infant was breathing, we know that it would have just like sucked onto their face and there would have been no way to get air. Um, the baby had changed color at this point, apparently from what the charge nurse said, and he was, it, it was a little boy. Uh, you'll find out more about that in a little bit, but, um, he was gone and it was too late to do anything. And watching the interview with this charge nurse was, it, it was so sad. I mean, I, my heart broke for him and I hope if I'm ever in the hospital, this is the type of nurse that I have because he was so caring and so passionate about the fact that he could have saved that baby or thought he could have because he mentioned that he had saved another baby who came in breach literally was coming out of the mother being born and was already blue and he managed to save that baby's life so you know very passionate about what he does and very distraught that he wasn't given the opportunity to to try to intervene and it was taken um so just a a great person, I think. I, I don't know him personally, but just hearing that testimony, it sounded like, you know, he wanted to do everything within his ability to try to save this baby's life. And now he, he wasn't going to get the opportunity. So, so needless to say, we got a situation, right? We have got a deceased infant. We have got a mother who was in the, a teenage mother who was in this bathroom. We're not sure what happened, but it doesn't sound like it was on the up and up. So we need to call the police and get them involved because this is this is outside what the hospital can handle, right? They can handle medically anything you need to do, but this has gone far beyond their their reach. So they call the police, the police get there. And as I understand it, they all go into the room where Alexi is. Alexi is, sorry, I'm gonna call her Lexi like a million times. Um, I think her mom refers to her as Lexi at one point, so it kind of stuck with me. Um, so they go in and they begin to question her, you know, like what happened in there. And at first she's kind of sticking to her story and then they're like, the jig is up. We cleaned the bathroom and we took out the trash can and we know that there was a birth in that room and you were the only one in there and now we have a deceased little one on our hands. What the actual front door happened? And at that point, you know, she she starts to cry. I discovered a dead baby in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. It came out of me and I didn't know. Lexi, I told you about this. But I just asked you, baby, to tell me the truth. What did you do to it? Okay, stop right here. Stop, stop. stop. <laughs> Number one priority, guys. Number one priority is she just had a baby. I don't know if she's still looking at the placenta. She's bleeding significantly. Yeah. I was spoken to the obstetrician at Loveless. They want her up there as soon as possible. Okay. I need, I need your, I just need your permission to transfer her for medical to me. She needs to be right. Oh, you're right. You, well, she you, is a student too. No, 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 you're, right. you're right. You, you're right. She needs to. I'm sorry, I forgot. She's 19. But you need to, for, to make sure that you're safe. I need 
to send you to Left Loveless to labor delivery. Will you please agree to that? Yes. 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 Okay, okay. Great. great. I'm going to work on that. Um, in terms, I'm sorry about this, but in terms of delivering um, a baby and it looked like you tried to hide it, you do have to have the police involved. And that thing was crying. It came out with that I know, I know. But the, the baby's going to have to be taken for autopsy and uh, there'll be an investigator and everything. How big is the baby? It's full term. What? Nine months? That thing was crying. Let's see. Have you watched the news of the, the girls that what they do to their babies and what they go to jail? Who's crying? She just keeps on saying, um, you know, Lexi, we've talked about this. We've, you've, we, have you seen on the news what happens to mothers that do this to their babies? And she's just, you know, she's crying. I didn't know what to do. Da, 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 da. So now the, now the police have something, they got a whole thing on their hands, right? They got like this strange reactions. They've got this distraught teenager. They've got a deceased infant. They got way more than they planned on for like two in the morning on January 27th. I am certain. So they, um, if you hear my dog in the background, she's, I think she's getting a little jealous that I'm talking to the camera. Um, but you know, they're, they're trying to sort all this stuff out, you know, so they get mom out of the room. And they continue to talk to Alexi. And she says that he, the infant was not moving when it was born. Um, she, you know, had, I, I think she may have even said that it was already blue. And she didn't know what to do. So this is what, this is how it played out, right? And, you know, hospital staff's like, okay, you know, that, that could be the case. Um, many people panic, I would think, in that type of situation, especially if they're alone. Um of course, you know, I, I got a question, like, what kind of superhuman strength this chick gets when she's just had a baby? Because I've had two. And, and and trust me, I had I had epidurals. I had the whole nine. Like, I mean, I, I went in asking for one the day I found out I was pregnant because I'm scared, right? Like, I'm like, it's going to hurt. Like, I mean, I know where babies come out, and I'm scared. But I'm just sitting here thinking at 19, you know, obviously you got more you got more staying power probably than I do right now at not 19 and you've got, you know, just a lot more bounce back, but still the baby comes out the same place. You go through the same labor and you don't dilate to 102. You dilate to a 10. So how in the blankety blank did she birth this child? She cleaned up the bathroom. Like, cleaned it up, pulled her britches up, and just walked out in the hallway. Because I can tell you, I didn't walk straight for a minute. I sure did not. I will never forget them telling me that I needed to get up and use the bathroom. And I'm like, you said what? Like, you said I need to do what? All right, I'm letting my dog up here if you guys see what I'm doing. Come on. There we go. Um, she's probably going to be in a lot of them. So, um, this is my little snuggle buddy for when things get deep like this. But... <sighs> She walked down the hallway with her, like, what in the, what is happening? And, you know, at this point, too, they're starting to think about, all right, wait a minute. So she had this baby in the bathroom. There was no one to medically intervene. But it's not trailing around down the hallway behind her with the umbilical cord still attached. So how'd she do that? Because there shouldn't have been anything in that bathroom for her to cut it. So they look at the baby and the nurse described the, the umbilical cord detached area as looking like an animal had attacked it. And it was shredded, like, you know, the string cheese, like you took to school when you were a kid and you shred off the pieces and all that. That's what it looked like. I can no longer feed this to my children because of this story. That's, it has traumatized me because they assume that she just ah, like like, ha, ha, like I, I don't even know what to say about that like holy crap so she she got it cut i guess I but they're like oh, all right holy heck she could be having some some serious complications from this right like you're because you're supposed to birth the placenta afterwards you're supposed to you know have a clean umbilical cord cut for the baby and you and like just all these things and and i'm sitting here saying this like i know all this i just only know 
whatever the doctor was doing to me whenever I was having a baby. I wasn't in the bathroom alone, thank God. But they're like, we got to check for everything. We got we to gotta check. We got to get her somewhere else. Like, we got to get her to a bigger hospital that has an obstetrician and that can take care of her. But we need to do an ultrasound first to see what, what's going on. Like, what, what's left? What do we need to try to do? So they check. And, um, yeah, there's, like, there's no placenta. <laughs> there's not any. And they're like, well, okay. So she evidently birthed the placenta, as one should. Where is it? Because the baby was in the trash, there was trash on top of the baby, and then an empty trash bag. But never in there did I say placenta. So they are assuming, without her admitting it, that she ripped it, not only out of her, but in pieces, and flushed it. <sighs> I, don't even, I, I don't even know what to say, y'all. I don't even know what to say. I mean, what went on in that bathroom? Like, whoo, whoo, whoo. Oh, I know, I know. I, it's, it's, it's crazy. So, they realize that they've got a medical situation on their hands, majorly. So, they're going to get her to where she needs to go. And then they need to talk to the family because by this point, family started showing up. Her boyfriend's shown up. All these people have shown up because they don't know all this, right? They just know she's been admitted to the hospital. We need to go check on Alexi. What's going on? So they go out to the, to the waiting room. I think mom's out there by this point, you know, because Alexi is 19. So they could talk to her on her own. Um, so mom's out there. Uh, boyfriend's out there. I think there's a couple other family members out there. And there's footage of this as well. And they, you know... I guess, tell them what's going on, tell them like, you know, you know, she's had this baby, we got to get her somewhere else, we got to make sure she's not getting infected or whatever other complications can come along with this type of procedure, for lack of a better word, of, of how this all went down. So they, they had, you know, they, they're heading out with her, med flight and her, talking to these family members and they're kind of joking. I mean, you can watch the video. Um, I'll, I'll try to drop a clip in if I can. Um, but here's what was so disturbing to me, um, watching this, like, and this was Alexi, this was her mother. And this was these family members. Anytime they talked to any of them, not one person asked a question about this baby, not, you know, was boy or girl. Was it alive? Was it breathing? Was it was it a was it a boy? Was it a girl? Was it a goldfish? Like what? nothing. They didn't care. They were everybody was real concerned about Alexi getting in trouble, which I, I get it. You know, I got kids too. I get it. But this was a living, breathing baby. Part of you guys, part of your family, and nobody asked a thing. You know, not a thing. Was it full term? What was going on? Are you sure? Are you sure there's nothing that can be done? Can we can we see him? Can we take him for a ceremony or, or whatever your practices may be to lay a loved one to rest? Mm -mm. No, no. Mm -mm. Not unless they release some more footage that I haven't seen. But we've seen body cam footage and we've seen uh, nurse testimony. We've seen all kinds, or not testimony, they're not in court yet, but nurse interviews all that kind of stuff and nothing nobody repeated that they ever said a thing and asked about that sweet little baby and that is that's disturbing that's troubling to me like why why would you not care at all you know I mean even Alexi didn't ask what comes next you know I mean if god forbid one of my children had been stillborn I would have been traumatized and I would have probably handled it very poorly but I would have wanted to know how, how do I, you know, find them a resting place? How, can I take them with me or, or, you know, have them transported to where I would like the service to be or, you know, whatever, but nothing. And, and I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how they felt that way. I don't know how she was in that bathroom and didn't make any sounds, didn't scream, didn't do anything, didn't cry, nothing. I have no idea, no idea, but that's where we are. Well, they sent her on her way, you know, and they let her go and get the medical attention that she definitely needed. 
and they start their investigation. They talk to these nurses, they talk to, you know, everybody that they can to try to figure out what what went on in this bathroom. And the main missing piece of the puzzle for for everybody for for law's sake and that type of thing was was this baby alive when it was born? Or was it still born as she said? Nothing was moving. Nothing was making any noise. Well, the autopsy results came back and they don't lie. And they don't lie, girl. They don't lie. And they found that the cause of death was entrapment. And what that means for this purpose is basically that the baby died of suffocation. There was air in its stomach. There was air in its lungs. And they know that it took a breath, possibly a, a couple. Um, no one heard it crying, to, from what I understand. No one has said that. So, you know, obviously maybe it, he wasn't crying, but all babies aren't born crying. Lots of times they have to suction them, you know, then they got to pop that booty or something like that. That doesn't mean that it's 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 no longer with us. It just means that, you know, got, got to get a few things moving before you hear that cry that you're going to hear many, many more times. And it's going to, it's going to just awaken your soul and sometimes break your heart because, you know, as a new, as a new parent, you love that cry. And then sometimes that cry is so hard because you can't fix whatever, it's, whatever your little one's crying over. But either way, that cry, you know, you just, it's, it's right here. It hits you unless you're these people, apparently. Um, I'm sure these, I don't think they would care. Um, but anyway, now we know that this little boy was born alive at 30 weeks gestation. He weighed five pounds and nine ounces, and he was just about 18.9 inches long. So um, I'm just going to keep throwing that out there because he was a real person. He was a real person that he deserves to at least be talked about and asked about because no one else seemed to want to do that. And I, I just think that's so sad. But with all this, they went to the district attorney, presented all this all this evidence, and on May 10th, they issued a warrant for Alexi's arrest. They go to the house, and her mother just flips out. Like, she's like, what are you taking her for? I don't understand. What are you arresting her for? I don't understand. Blah, blah, blah. What do you not understand? What do you not understand? She put a baby in the trash can alive and, like, covered it up with a trash bag. Girl, bye. Girl, bye. Like, you know, you you know at this point what she's being arrested for. Now, I'm not saying you have to agree with it. I'm not saying that you're not going to go hire an attorney to represent her to the best of his, his or her ability. You should do that. That is your right in this American justice system. But you know what she's being arrested for. You know. You absolutely know what is going on here. So, step aside step aside. I just, I can't with her mother. Um, and the, the, her attorney has spoken out, Alexi's attorney has spoken out and said that, you know, Alexi was definitely under some trauma and some stress and all that type of stuff. And I'm sure she was that, you know, still says that she maintains, um, I think she's still maintaining that she did not know she was pregnant. So that's where I find this to be a little fishy. Um, and let me give you a couple of reasons why. Now, I'm not accusing her of doing anything malicious or wanting to do anything more than acting in the moment. However, a lot of people have spoken out since this incident happened. And they have said that not only did she know she was pregnant because they, she told them, she told them the baby's name was going to be Alex because she knew it was a boy, I assume. Um... They won't give their names because they said it's a very small town and they don't want any kind of repercussions for talking. So take that for what it's worth. Is I, I almost feel like if you won't give your name, it might not be true. But I want to show you these pictures. And these are pictures of her cheerleading. And, you know, prior, you can see that she was an athletic, build, slender, you know, just normal weight girl. And then all of a sudden she has gained all this weight and it's all in her midsection, which she looks, she looks pregnant to me. Speaking from someone who's been pregnant, she looks pregnant to me. Um, the nurse also stated that she said that she had stopped taking her birth control pills and started taking diet pills. 
Um, so that could be interpreted in one of two ways, right? One, it could be maybe she didn't know. She thought she was just gaining all this weight and she wanted to lose it. Or the nurse even alluded to the fact that could it be something more sinister and she thought it could possibly do something to the pregnancy. Um, we we'll ne- we'll, may never know the answer to that, but that was something that she stated in the hospital that she was on these diet pills. Uh, her cheerleading coach has been said to have asked her if she was pregnant and she said no that she had just gained a lot of weight and I guess that you know led her into the diet pills so who knows there um I I definitely think you can look at her and tell something is off and I would also think if her mother knew she was on birth control pills one what did you you know she's got this boyfriend she's on these pills she's 19 he's you know seniors in high school like things may be happening so you know that would be my first thought when all the weight was gained. I think if it were my child, um, just, I just gotta be in the back of your mind, right? Teens, we're going to be teens and it's going to be like, oh no, you know, have you guys made some grown folks decisions with some grown folks outcomes now? But no one seemed to ask that question. So who knows? And I also would say that, you know, just, you know, just being close to your, your child and seeing them every day, I would think you would notice that type of development in their body and you would have talked to them about it. And and maybe they did and they're just not alluding to it right now. I don't know, but it just very much seems like to me that it was kind of obvious what was going on here. But, and then this, this turn of events kind of led me down a road where I was like, what, what's, what's the story here? Why is there no remorse for this little one? And that was when I said, pay attention about now. No one's asking about it and the situation because 14 weeks later, 14 weeks after this event, or even not, let's we'll just rewind even further. A few days after this, this happens, the situation, once she's able to be back on her feet, she's back at school. She's back at school. Like nothing ever happened. Walking down the hallway, eating lunch cheering I get I don't know if she's still cheering but she's doing normal stuff right she's back at school and my mind's blown right there because I'm like I don't know if I could face all those people I think I would want to finish the rest of my year at home I mean there's so many distance learning options now and all that kind of thing I'd be like can I just homeschool can I take my GED I don't want to see those people again they know what happened I don't want I don't want to deal with it but no she's right back 14 weeks later she's clickety click photographed arm in arm with Devin at the prom in this little short cute dress and sneakers like like living her best life and I'm not saying if you have a miscarriage or a stillbirth or anything like that you you have your baby place it for adoption you you have your baby and you're raising it that you shouldn't enjoy things in life I'm just saying I think as traumatic as the situation is like it just shocks me that we're just back to normal lickety split I would think I would be running around crying praying screaming whatever but no she's at prom so and that was just prior to the arrest after the arrest um she did bond out and she was allowed to take her final exams but the high school did ask that uh even though she had the grades and she passed and all these things that she not attend her graduation they felt like it would be too much of a negative distraction from the other students. And, and I agree with that. And and she did too. She bowed out gracefully and said that she would accept her diploma, um, but not attend the ceremony. And I think that was a wise choice all the way around. Uh, Cause this is getting a lot of media attention now as it should. I mean, this, this is one of those cases that's just like, you almost don't believe it if you don't read it and see the videos and all that type of stuff. Cause it just sounds like a made for TV movie or something crazy um so she is out on bond she has graduated artesia high school she is sitting she is committed and been accepted to um, new mexico state university and she plans on attending in the fall and i mean i don't know y'all i i I don't know that she's gonna make that because she's got a trial date set for october 2nd of 2023 right now as we sit here today So, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, this story, it chilled me to the bone just for the lack of care that there was, like, an empathy for the infant, Um, Alex. I I, I don't, 
I, I'm going to go with that name since that's the only thing I've heard muttered. But this sweet little one, there was just nothing around that, around him, any care or anything for his little life. And, and I, as a mom, you know, I would be concerned if that was my daughter, but not like, we've talked about this, Mah! you know, that's, I just, I don't think that would, I think my reaction would have been tears and fear and like oh, what did you do like you could have come to me you could have talked about this you know you could have gone to a police station to a fire station to to hospital you know you can surrender a baby in, in I, maybe all states now i'm not sure but most places have safe haven laws now where you can just go surrender your baby i i don't want to do this i can't do this whatever and there's no question you 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 submit the baby and you walk away and I, I love that because that that gives you help that you may desperately need, you know, and, and, and it sounds like she may have not been in a situation where she wanted to raise a baby. Um, I mean, if you've been in denial about a pregnancy that long, you know, there's, there's a good chance that maybe you're not there yet maturity wise. I don't know. Um, but then it also sounds like there was a lot of pressure on her, a lot of mental anguish, maybe from her surroundings that didn't make it a comfortable place to have these tough conversations. So who knows, you know, maybe that was something that was playing on her mind. I hate to think and and struggle to just believe that someone could be that sinister that they're just like, nah, it's not going to do this. And you're going in the trash. Like I, it's just crazy to me. It just, it hurts my heart. Um, so I don't know what else is going to come out at trial. I will certainly be here to cover that with you guys. Um, desperately looking forward to hearing your comments because I don't know what to make of this. It's so sad all the way around. It, it's just the, it's tormented me since I read this. It's really just hurt my heart. Um, and I'm a tough cookie for the most part. And that, this one has, has got me. Um, and her lawyer is, is I, if I, there, there's footage of him out there and he's very, callous and very cold and you know says that the hospital is at fault because they did administer some medication um it was zofran and uh sodium chloride i believe that sounds like that's probably something wrong um it's something that would have been in the iv and then as well as morphine i do know that some of my friends have been given zofran under the care of a doctor for severe nausea and things like that um i, th- I think that's what it was for uh, I'm going to like voice this over if I'm wrong. Um, but morphine is a definite strong drug. So, you know, he's alleging that that could have done something to the infant and that that was why he was still born as Alexi, Alexi says. Um, but again, I'm just going to go back. The autopsy says that that, that part isn't true, but maybe if, if the little one wasn't moving around because he did need the suction and that type of thing, maybe she misinterpreted something. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. I'm, I'm blown away. And I, w- I, I think that jury, you know, if they take this, you know, all the way, I think this is going to have a, they're going to have a hard time on their hands. Um, from what I've read, New Mexico does carry a life sentence if this is considered homicide. And then there, I think it's a maximum of 10 years if it's child abuse. So there is a lot that is at stake here. Uh, she's a young girl. So this could be a long time in prison if it goes one way. Uh, Ten years is still a long time if it goes the other way. So there's a lot of repercussions for the actions that she did. So I don't know. (sighs) Y'all, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, I would love to hear from you. And if you look in my description box, there is my link to my Instagram. And there's also an email for cases. If you have any case suggestions, I would love to hear them. I have a lot on my plate uh, that I want to put out here for you guys. But I'm always eager to hear what you all have to say. But as always, that does it for me today. And I hope that you are having a fantastic week. I want you to stay safe out there and stay sweet, my little cupcakes. And I will see you next time. Bye.